Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Catfish Combat with Joel and DJ. Say hi, buddy. Hi. All right, so uh, we're at the Guntersville Dam today. It's the beginning of July, so it's post 4th of July weekend. So uh, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I, I really tried to invest more this year in uh, the dam and the Guntersville Dam, just trying to figure that system out. It is its own ecosystem in and of itself. So um, what I'm doing today, it's a little bit different, is we're gonna catch some skipjack. That's why I brought TJ along. We got about four hours to burn. It is two, a little past 2.30 right now. It's just when we could get out. Um, I can get the girls with, with the grandparents. So um, yeah, so conditions for today, man, it is hot. It's about 93 out. Uh, atmospheric pressure is average about 30.12. Uh, not super high. Wind is pretty mild out of the southeast. So, um, and by mile, I mean like less than five miles an hour. So what we're gonna do here, as you guys can see, we're gonna go head up to the Guntersville Dam, and I'm gonna anchor in uh, downstream of the generators where the, the turbines are. That's where the skipjack have just been running back and forth all day, just feeding all the time. So one of the lessons I've learned about this system and skipjack, because last year I didn't have a lot of success with them. So again, I'm also trying to invest in, in figuring out skipjack a little bit more. So around the middle to end of May, in all these bodies of water here pretty much in Northern Alabama, the shad hatch. When the shad hatch happens, it's these little fry, these little fry gizzard shad and threadfin shad, and the majority of them congregate near bridges, they congregate on bridge columns, and they congregate by the dam. A lot of that has to do with where they're bred, that's where their, their uh, spawn actually occurs. Also, that's where their food source is. The, the, the shad eat the algae, um, so that draws them in over there. That's what the skipjack are feeding on. So why it's so hard to find them in the winter is because they're usually not over there because the shad fry, they're, they're all over the place in the river. But consistently in those couple of months when there's shad fry in those zones, especially under the powerhouse and around the sluice gates, um, that they get caught in the current and they get sucked into the turbine water and that's when the skipjack are just crushing them all day. You'll see their splashes, you'll see them. There's, there's hundreds of them in there. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm gonna throw out a couple of spoons off the back end. I'm gonna do that double rig uh, jig. I'll show you guys that one later. One other thing I wanna say about bait um, for this year. So looking back at kind of my, my records, my mental, mental records of what I keep here for, um, for the catfish I've been catching, I typically do better catfishing uh, using shad in the winter, fall and winter time frame, and kind of early spring. But when it's really hot out, I have a lot more success with skipjack. Fresh, fresh preferably, but frozen also. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the heat. Uh, it dissipates the oils a lot more uh, in the hotter water versus the colder water. Because then, man, the, the colder water, they pretty much ignore, shad, ignore skipjack. That's just kind of what I've noticed. So uh, what my plan today is we've got about four hours to burn and try to catch as many skipjack as we can in those four hours. So I either fill up the coolers and bug out at that time or just go tell, uh, get as many as we can in the four. All right, uh, let's get fishing. Or I'll show you what I'm doing first. Once I get there, then we'll get fishing. Okay, guys, so here's my setup for, uh, for how I'm doing this. So you can see the powerhouse um, up there is where the turbines are. You can see the moving water here. So the shad, little, yeah, there's, a, there's one up there. All right, so I may end up pushing a little bit further up, but basic idea, last time I was here, they were a little bit further down. So uh, I am throwing in an anchor here. Be very careful about this one. There's a dead, dead shell daddy right there. All right, so uh, be very careful about this one. Don't throw your anchor up too close. If you need to get closer up to the powerhouse, you can usually, there's like spikes over there. You can tie off to those, but don't throw your anchor up there. Um, also warning, if the, the current's a little high here, if you're not, um, you got shoulder issues or you're not really strong enough to pull that thing in, uh, just be advised that, that that is quite an effort physically to get that thing back in. Uh, not not huge, not a huge issue for me, but it might be for some anglers. Just that flat like the heron. Yeah, you got, you got that sunfish. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do, um, so we've got, here's our rigs. So my first rig, this is a Cadence CR5. Um, I've got a Fluger President Reel on that one. So if you guys saw my last video, I'm using the same rig basically. Uh, I did add one little nice feature to this. So I got a three-way swivel, okay? So I got this three-way swivel. On the bottom, with about a 15-inch leader, I've got a one-eighth-ounce jig head. 
and up top I've got maybe an eight inch liter, eight to 10 inch liter, and I'm, uh, that's a one eighth ounce or one sixteenth ounce jig head, so it's, it's lighter, okay? So we want the heavier one on the bottom so that it basically forms that triangle as we're going, as we're fishing, right? I'm gonna put Berkeley Gulp minnows on these, the two and a half inch ones. I'm gonna kind of just fan cast around at a 180. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a couple of spoons off the back. I've got this spoon. It, I don't, guys, I don't even remember the model, but um, these are pretty easy to find. It's basically just a, you know, your typical one inch spoon. And then I've got about a inch and a half spoon on this one as well. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do, just also to keep it down a little bit, is I'm using a half ounce weight with a swivel on here. This is a 20, uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Same thing, oh, my floor, my uh, double jig rig, that's also a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader attached to eight pound test line. And this one, this bait caster has 15 pound mono on it as well. Okay, so we're just gonna throw these. These spoons will just flutter off the back there and uh, we'll wait for them to get hooked up. And that, those are gonna be TJ's fish. And yeah, we'll try to get some skippies. Let me see those sudden yanks, TJ. See how it's kind of like popping like this? That's just the current, it's just flapping around the current. But when it gets yanked real hard, there we go. Got one, TJ. Got him. Oh, I got two of them. I had two of them on one on each jig. There's a skippy, buddy. Let's get him in the boat. There we go. I had two on it one time, but he got off. All right, so you guys just lift these things like a bass. It's not a real big one, but he'll do. I right, keep an eye, buddy. They're they're behind us for sure. Do we keep that one? Yeah, we're keeping him, buddy. He's bait. That's what we're here for. All right, so let's get him on ice. Get him in the cooler. All right. There we go, TJ. Got him. Come here. Come here. Reel him in. There you go. Got one. TJ got one. Hooked him right in the head. Look at that. <laughs> nice job, buddy. <laughs> Look, you hooked him right on the nose. Right in the brains. All right, let's get him on ice. All righty. There you go. Take it out. You got him. You got him. TJ's got one. Bite him, dude. Here, keep it in your chest. Keep it in your chest. It's okay. Like this. There you go. Go ahead and reel him. There you go. You got him. Look at him. He's flapping around. Say, TJ, why? Hey. I think it's a good one, buddy. Get him. Let's see. We got a skippy. What do we got? What in the world? Oh, you got a white bass, dude. <laughs> nice. Keep yeah, him? yeah, you want to eat them? Yeah. Those are pretty good to eat, man. I want They got eat. real sharp gill. I can't lip him. Cause his yeah, he's got the hook in the top lip there. Alright, yeah, we can keep him, buddy. Yeah. Alright, TJ got a white bass. Yeah, there see there they are. They're off to the side back there. But they're there. Oh, got him. I got him, TJ. Did you see that? That's a good one, too. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, he's in the current. That's why. This is a pretty decent fish right here. Ah, that's a good skippy. There we go. He might have been. Come here, you. These things are so wiggly. 
All right, buddy, there's, there's number three. Yep, wait till it goes down, like really down, okay? You're right in their zone, man. Right now, you're right where they're jumping. There you go, right, my TJ, black one, black one. Oh, got him. You want this one? Yeah. Here, come here. Reel him in. Whoa, 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 TJ, I got one here. Okay, we got doubles, buddy. You gotta reel them in on your own, okay? You got him? Do you still have him? Yeah. You feeling fighting? Okay, good job. Bring him in. That's a big skippy right there. That's what we're looking for, man. You got him? Oh yeah, you definitely still got a fish. Bring him in. You got, yeah, you were dragging him on the surface. You got him. Come on, buddy, you got this. Come on, TJ. I'm gonna take care of this Skippy real quick. I'm gonna help you, all right? Yeah. I'm gonna leave him on the ground. You got it? Here, come on, come on, dude, you got it. You got him, bring him in. See him jumping? Yeah. You got it. I Good work, man. We got that. We got a bunch of skippies on the popcorn. The popcorn skipjack bite. Come on, bring him in. Bring him in. Let's get him in. Nice, That's buddy. That's a good one. Good That's job, dude. We got a lot of fish. Yeah, we we're going into. Yo. Got him. That's a big one. That's a hog, dude. Hold on. That's a really big skippy. Sorry, buddy. I had to get that one. That's a monster skippy. That's a nice, nice skippy. Uh, not that I can see. I'm sure there are inside of his guts. Got another one. Oh, I got two. I got doubles. I got two skippies. Good job, Daddy. Can you get the net, buddy? Whoa, whoa. Can you give me the net? Yeah. This is eight pound test line. I mean, it might not be able to hold that, but I got two. Yeah. Got two fish, fish here. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. We're looking at you like. Yeah. Here, hold it. Hold the net. Don't let it go, okay? There we go. Yeah. Oh, come here, both of you. All right, there's one. There's the other. Cool. Woo, two. So we got a lot more. Yep. All right. And so the spoons were somewhat successful. Um, one of them was not, so I, it just wasn't, it was getting bites, but it just wasn't getting hookups. So what I did, See that one? So what I did on that one, that's actually a crappie rig. I put a 1 8 ounce jig out there. It's like like maybe 15 feet behind the boat. And that one is getting just fish after fish after fish. They're just clobbering it. I mean, you can see this. They're everywhere. They, they seem to be coming right through that lane um, over and over and over again. So yeah, that's, that's hooking up a lot of fish. We're up to 19 at this point. So yeah, we'll just keep fishing. All right, so this is the craziest uh, bonanza of skipjack popcorn I've ever seen. Um, we've got 16 so far. Still got a couple hours to go, man. Uh, my goal is 30. That's what I'm trying to pull in today, but it's like every cast we're getting fish. TJ's, he's taking a break right now because he's caught so, there we go. He's caught so many of these things. Oh, he threw it. All right, that's fine. Like I said, it's like every cast, man. There's hundreds of them in here right now. So yeah, we'll see if we can Get to 30 before 30 in two hours. So I got 14 to go. Oh yeah, TJ's got a good one. Let's see if we can get him in here. Get him, but oh shoot, I think you're tangled up here. Here, I'll get this out of your way or try to. Keep doing what you're doing. You're good. There we go. I got him. That's a good one, buddy. All right, here. Ready? Ready? Let's bring him in. All right. Good job. That's a big one, dude. Good job. That's fat. Oh, I don't want him to fall off. He's going to fall in the water if he does. 
Oh no, it is. What the heck? I think he got snagged. That's a big one though. What is that? Oh, it's a skippy. There we go. He just flipped. Yeah, I got him like on the gills or the belly or something. All right, let's get him in. Yeah, I got him. In the belly. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, don't. Don't you escape. All right. Don't you dare escape. TJ's over there eating his snacks. He's, yeah, like I said, he's on a break. So, let's see if I can get one here. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, I missed him. Got him. Yeah, I got him. Yeah, you, I tell you, you gotta set the hook. <coughs> see, this one keeps getting hit too. You gotta set the hook so hard on these things. All right, there we go, there's 21. Nice skippy. They keep getting right in the lower lip. TJ, whoa, easy buddy. Can you open the bucket for me, please, bud? there we go yeah. okay so that's gonna wrap us up for this episode of catfish combat uh between tj and i tj say hey Hi. all right so between tj and i we got 33 skipjacks so that's plenty um we got a storm coming in behind me we gotta get off the water there's a lot of lightning and rain i'll, I'll go through rain that's not a problem but lightning uh, especially with my son i'm out of there man uh, but yeah, we got plenty. I got to get some ice on the way home. Uh, we ran out of space also in the cooler and the bucket. And there's some big skippies. So I'm going to go home, put them in, va in vacuum seal. And remember, if you're going to do this, don't put them in like Ziploc bags. Make sure you have a, some type of vacuum sealer. I just got one of those, you know, $50 ones from Walmart. It works pretty well. Um, so I'm going to go home and vacuum seal all of those. Now, what we learned today. So for about the next couple months, so like June, July time frame, maybe even in the beginning of August, Great time at these dams to be getting skipjack because of those shad fry. As soon as you start seeing those shad fry, that's a sign the skipjacks are moving up and they're going to start feeding. So this is a good time to stock up. I got about six months worth of skipjack, so that's pretty good. Um, definitely broke my curse. Definitely, definitely got this this idea dialed down. It was a feeding frenzy, man. Just bonkers over there. Almost every cast we were getting one. Or at least some of them I missed, but yeah, man, we got a lot of fish, a lot of bites too. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you like this kind of content, uh, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Leave me a comment if you have any recommendations. If not, you know, no biggie. Again, I'm not in this for the money. I'm just out in this to get the sport of catfishing out there and just show people that, hey, you don't need a $80,000 sea arc. You don't need, you know, all this fancy gear and all the time in the world. As long as if you're putting time in the water when you get the time off and use the resources you've got, you can do this on a budget, man. It's it's not it's not that hard. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm I'm hoping to just spread that information, just get people encouraged to get them into this sport. So remember, today is the day the Lord has made. Stay on mission for him. God bless, and we'll see y'all later. TJ. Bye. <laughs> it's cute, isn't he? All right, later. <laughs>